tonight I want to greet you all, greet Vandris Mary and to our visiting friends and the members of this church. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to say that tonight it's one of those teachings, praise God, that in many ways makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Praise God. And the reason for this type of teaching and why it makes people uncomfortable is because as human beings, we love to be comfortable. We love feel comfortable. And truth be told, even if what we are involved in is wrong, as long as we are comfortable, then we are quite fine. If we look in scripture and realize that the Lord himself, whenever Jesus spoke and he taught things or said things that allowed people to become uncomfortable, realize that they did not only walk away and say they disagree, but in many cases, <laughs> they tried to even take his life. The Bible said once, after he said, after, before Abraham was, I am, they went as far as to pick him up and try to throw him down a gully, the Bible says, in order to break his neck. And so we realize that whenever men find themselves in a position when they hear things that makes them feel uncomfortable then they begin to they tend to act up just a bit but tonight my purpose I've always said my purpose as a preacher and a teacher is to bring to God's people knowledge what you do with that knowledge is entirely up to you. He said, I will not prophesy in your name no more. I will not teach in your name no more. I found myself in that position, but as I said, that was years ago. Today, I could care less what anybody wants to think when I teach. The bottom line is, my responsibility is to bring to you the word is to bring to you knowledge is to bring to you truth i believe the nobody's term that black people use is to allow you to be woke get your minds to the place where you wake up from your sleeping because ignorance is truly not bliss so tonight i want to talk to us as we are in the silly season i want to talk to you about what we called Christmas. Praise God. Christ Mass. Yeah. Christmas. There's hardly one person probably in here tonight who have not or probably is presently celebrating Christmas. And we live in a time where persons say, well, I'm not wrong with that. You see, the thing about it, you know, is that many of us partake of things without understanding the origin of things. Where is it from? Where was it originated? Why does this exist? And also, question ourselves, how does God feel about this that I'm taking part in? Now, when God called the children of Israel out of Egypt, and they went back to the land of Canaan. There are certain things that God told them not to do. He told them not to take part in the customs of the children of the Chaldeans or of the Canaanites. Because God knows that from once his people begin to indulge any at all in any sort of practice which is against his will. Not only will they violate him, but God will lose his people completely to the practices 
of the heathen. Now, let me ask a question. How does God feel? I asked it on Sunday. How does God feel about idolatry? Can anybody? We're here on Sunday. We ask a question. I need somebody to just shout it out, man. God hates it. He hates it. He hates it. He's jealous. Huh? He's a jealous God. He's a jealous. That's that's really the word that I'm looking for. That God is jealous. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah chapter 45, it says that my glory will I not give to another. God made it specific and this is why I don't know these people come up with this idea of Trinity, you know. Because God himself says he's a jealous God. So I don't know where people get the concept of three gods from. He said his glory will he not give to another. Neither his praise to graven images anything that spells idolatry god hates it and as simple as certain things are presented because what happened you know is that in modern times what has been done in modern times is we have repackaged and rebrand paganism and have now painted it as christianity and present it to the new world and now we have a nation we have a generation I should say of people who are indulging in practices that is not of God and that God is not pleased with and we believe that it is just alright so those of us who celebrate Christmas and as far as even Easter Easter is not a practice of the Bible the whole concept of the 40 days of Lent, where they do talk about the fasting that Jesus did on the mountain, none of those things can find their basis in Scripture. How many of you have ever heard of the Council of Nicaea? Anybody? The hands raised. The Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea was formed in 325 AD. And this was where majority of what we know today as being Christianity was presented. Majority of the things that we practice was formed at the Council of Nicaea by the Catholic Church. Now, let me just break it up for you a bit. Catholicism, we did a teaching here some time ago on it. But let me just backtrack this a bit for those who were not here. Catholicism was founded by a man by the name of Pope Constantine. He was the one who actually mixed paganism, Babylonianism with Christianity. In Rome, the Christians were being persecuted. And Constantine went and he, he told the Christians, he said, listen, if you would make me your emperor, Whatever I'm saying here is, 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 is knowledge that you all can grasp anywhere. It's on the internet. It's, it's in books. So whatever I'm saying, you can feel free to check it out for yourself. He said, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's very simple. If you elect me as the emperor, then I will make Christianity the national religion of Rome. In other words, Christians will no more be persecuted. Bear in mind that Rome was known as a pagan nation that worshipped idols to the point that many of the days that we have now and many of the months that we have now are named of Roman gods. So he said, now listen, if you put me in, then I'll simply make sure that Christianity becomes the uh, religion, the national religion. As a result of that, they placed him in and within no time, what he did was he fused or merged the Babylonish beliefs and teachings with Christianity. And so a lot of the Christians that we know now, a lot of the patriots, a lot of the uh, apostles, the image that were used on them, what all they did was they changed over 
some of the image of Saturn and just put them now and give them Christian names. And we've seen where the world has accepted this as being Christianity. Now Christmas, I'm going to appeal to your common sense just a bit before I even touch scripture. I want to just appeal to your common sense. Now, many persons celebrate Christmas. And one of the indications for you to know that something is wrong is when you realize that the world loves a particular thing that celebrates God. Let me repeat that. When you see on a mainstream level the world accepts, indulges, highlights something about God. It is for you as a Christian to use your common sense and realize that something must wrong with that. Because if you notice, the celebration of Christmas over the Western world, majority of people celebrate Christmas. And they accept Christmas. But if you notice what it is really about, it's about a time of family. We come together and we share fellowship as a family. We share presence. Eh? The concept or the premise of which Christmas was quote unquote originally formed on is the fact that it was the birth of Christ. And a celebration of his birth. Now, if you notice, what has been done now is that it has become a commercial time. When do you find more things sell than in Christmas time? And everybody in the world can shout out Merry Christmas. And guess what? You'll see them at church on Christmas Sunday. But the rest of the year, you can rest assured, many of them, you'll never see them back in church again. Now, when we talk about Christmas, remember, it's easy for everybody to talk about, you know. Easy for everybody to say, oh, Merry Christmas. But how many of those persons who will shout Merry Christmas would actually live and walk by the teachings of Jesus Christ? Are you with me, everybody? So they celebrate this aspect, but everything else is put on the back burner. Notice Easter. Everybody, yes, again, them come up and then grab up Easter. Why? Bun and cheese time. Are you with me, everybody? And they will come at church on Easter Sunday. But after that, you won't see them again. Now, let us analyze scripturally what did the apostles teach and what is practiced in the Bible if we cannot find our practices based anywhere in scripture we need to rewind and come again you now one of the things that we need to do is analyze did the apostles keep Christmas did the apostles celebrate Christmas did the apostles command us to celebrate Christmas? What is Christmas? It's known as the birth of Christ. But what the apostles thought was the gospel. And the gospel places no emphasis on the birth of Christ. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Though he was born, there is no emphasis by the apostles, not even Jesus himself. When he taught his disciples, he said, listen, behold, it behoved Christ to suffer, die, and then what? Be resurrected. There was no emphasis by Jesus placed on his birth. It was placed on his suffering, his death, burial, and resurrection. As a matter of fact, if you check through the four Gospels, there's only two of them alone 
that made mention of his birth. Everybody else just speaks about when he came in and started to work and so on. Matthew spoke about his birth and Luke. Those are the only two. If you check Mark or check John, they just talk about him like he just appeared. There was no emphasis placed on his birth because his purpose was really to come and die and be resurrected in order to redeem mankind. Everybody with me? All right. So one of the first things I want us to look on tonight is we have to ask ourselves the question. How does God feel about us taking part in practices that are not of him? How does God feel about us participating in things that is not of God? Now, one of the arguments that many persons who celebrate Christmas say, they ask the question, so wasn't he born? Them said the fact that the matter is Jesus did born. So what wrong with it if me I celebrate Jesus' birthday? Now, of course, he was born. Of course, we have acknowledged that he did not just appear. The Bible says that when the fullness of time was come, God sent for his son made of a woman. So there's no question about that. What we are saying is, when we try to add to the word, or try to take away from the word, we are running in jeopardy with our souls. What we have to do is we have to stay in line with what the Bible teaches. Now let's see what God spoke to the children of Israel about. In the book of Jeremiah 10, and reading from 1 and 2. Read from it please. Huh? Learn not the way of the heathen. And let us clarify here. When we talk about Gentiles, pagans, or heathen, we are referring to any other nation that is not a descendant of Abraham, who is not a descendant of Jacob, who is Israel, or is not classified as a Jew. Every other nation is known as a pagan, a Gentile, or a heathen nation. Are you with me, everybody? So what the Lord was saying here to Jeremiah, tell my people to learn not the way of the heathen. So the Lord had to instruct his people to do what? Learn not the ways of the heathen, nor to take part in their practices. What were the ways of the heathen? Taking part in false god worship. Any form of worship, any form of practice that we indulge in, that is not of God, or originated with the God of the Hebrews, is a heathen practice, and is a heathen form of worship. Continue to read. Uh -huh. No, he said that be not, where is verse 2? He said, be not dismayed by the signs of heaven. That is speaking of astrology. And also speaking here of the heathen, um, for, what, for what the heathen are displayed. Let's read it again. Um, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For those of you who like on a horoscope, <laughs> and you listen to it every morning, I wish to say some woman come on every morning. Aren't you? You listen to your little horoscope every morning, then I can't go out before I hear, you know, about my Virgo, about my Leo, about my Pisces and whatever. You need to understand this. That for those of you who are come out well, this is because the better now, come here with Leo. <laughs> and as Leo has some he stay. You all need to understand this. That within your own mouth, you are cursing your own self by aligning and placing allegiance with a God that is not the true and living God. 
So we see where the Bible says God tell us to not learn their practices. But let us go into 1 Corinthians 10. Let's, let's, let's hear what the Apostle Paul says. Because some say, listen, you're a Christian, but nothing wrong in me celebrate Christmas. Nothing wrong in me call myself a Pisces. Nothing wrong in me just dabbling and look at this. I'm mean, uh, going out fully. Now, let's just see what the Apostle Paul says. Read from it, verse 20. Now, if you go into your NIV versions of the Bible, you'll see that the word devils is also translated as demons. He says the things that the Gentiles sacrifice because they know not the true and living God. He said the things that they sacrifice, they sacrifice to who? Demons. To devils, demons. Now, continue. In other words, what I'm saying to you tonight is the same thing that the Apostle Paul is saying. Virgin, me know why your fellowship with devils. There's a specific time when the Jews, traditionally, even to this day, when the Jews would send their sheep out with the shepherd. And then there's a certain time when they would bring them back in. Just like those of us who know when your parents or whoever um, raised goat. When I send out the quote, them and you know, at a certain time, them do it. Go for them. I mean, sometimes you even hear, I, I remember men who live in my community say, them now make you go there and sleep out of door. <laughs> what they, what, yeah, what they mean, you know. I wonder, and a, and a, a bush they mean, but they say out of door. Because from the end of the yard, is not out of door. But when them they out of bush, they out of door. So it is a traditional thing. It is a common thing. Now, let's analyze this very clearly. The, the, the sheep were kept in the outer country during the summer. In other words, they would send the sheep out during the summer period. And they would bring them back in in the rainy season, in the time when rain began. And what we are going to do tonight we're going to just really take a look really at, 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 at the fact that Jesus could not have been born on December 25th because let's, 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 let's look here. Read from it. Alright, so we're clear that while the shepherds were out watching their flock is when the Lord was born. Am I in the Bible? Am I in the Bible? Yes. It is clear that according to the scripture, it is while the shepherds were watching their flock by night, that's when the angel came. If you look at the verses after, you'll see some more. Now, historically, the Jews would send their sheep out during the summer period and bring them back home in the rainy period which would be in the December period now to prove to you let's go to the next slide now we're going to be looking here at some other scriptures to prove that in the month that we know as December is a time of rain when nobody would ever carry their sheep, their sheep out, their sheep out during the rainy period, they would do it in the summer, and then the rainy season start anywhere from October down to December. So nobody knows when Jesus was born. We can only assume of the time to prove to you. That no one knows. I said it on Sunday. What Herod did was, Herod sent to kill all the children who were two years and under saying, he might estimate that this would have been the time when the king was born. Are you with me, saints? He did not send to kill a child at a specific age. He said, listen, this is the time frame 
when the Christ would have been born. So I'm saying kill within this age. Now, watch this. I want somebody with your Bible to read from Ezra. Ezra 10, 9. I, I, I put this translation on the screen. If you notice, it's from the New Living Translation. But I want one of you just to find it in your Bibles. And stand and read from it. Ezra 10, verse 9. Then all the men of Judah and mm -hmm. Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month. It was the? Ninth month. Which month? Ninth month. It was the ninth month. Please note that. The time back in Ezra's days. This is long before New Testament. This is long before Christ. This was in B.C. He said in the ninth month, what happened? On, on the twelfth. The 20th uh -huh. of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, uh -huh. trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. Because of the what? No, man, you're not reading your more, you're reading, man. You're, you're, because of this matter uh -huh. and for the great rain. Because there was a what kind of rain? Great rain. Great rain. Within which period of time? The ninth month. It is known scripturally that in the ninth month, in that season is a time of great rain. Go to the next slide. And Ezra the no, next slide. No, this is from Songs of Solomon 2, verse 11. Please read for me. See, it right up the top there, man. You can read it. You notice what Solomon said in the Songs of Solomon? See what is past and what happened. So Solomon here in reference to winter ascribes winter with what? Rain. A time of great rain. Are you with me everybody? Now this is a calendar of our um, a mixture of our calendar with the Jewish calendar. And if you notice here that all the way around coming over to the ninth month Remember, it said the ninth month, the nineteenth day, the, um, nineteenth year, right? Yes. Which period is this? December, November to December. November to December is a period on the Jewish calendar, mixing it with the Julian calendar that we have now. When they said the ninth month, it is in the period of November to December, which is a rainy time. So tell me now, saints, for what reason under heaven? Would these shepherds have to carry their sheep out in the night? There's absolutely no reason on earth why them shepherds are some super shepherd. Them would have even more brilliant than David. Scripturally and historically, the ninth month is a time and a period of rain, and everybody knows it. When rain come, place cold. Are you with me, saints? So what reason would these men have? They're out there in a the night. In a rain. I watch sheep. It's just not historically accurate. What I'm doing here now, I'm trying to appeal to your common sense. I'm even not even trying to push the scripture as much. I'm trying to appeal to your common sense that they could not have been out at night in the winter. Because this was a time of cold and rain. Are you with me, everybody? So, the question that we have to ask ourselves now is it's a very pertinent one. So, if it's not the birthday of Christ, whose birthday is this? And this is where now, bear in mind that tonight I'm really doing a very concise presentation. This is not something that I'm going down in a lot of details about and I've done other presentations uh, with regards to this this is why I'm really making a concession because if I should really dwell in, delve into all of it it's going to take a lot of time so I'm really trying to make it concise so the question is who whose birthday was this and we go to the next slide where are we now side side 8 now this is the thing that I want to bring out to you. The Christmas tradition 
existed long before Jesus ever set face on this earth in the body of a man. This practice existed long before Jesus was born. It is a practice that dates back to ancient Babylon. Again, I don't have time, but let me just try and put it together. Remember in the days of Abraham, the Bible says the whole earth was together. And they said, go to, let us make a city and a tower which height reaches up to heaven. The king at that time was none other than King Nimrod. He had a wife by the name of Simaramis and a son by the name of Tumuz. His wife was coincidentally also his mother. Yes, Sister Barker. Put up your mouth now. Close it up back now. Say his mother, Sister Barker, sir. Yes, Sister Barker. His wife was his mother. He got married to his mother after his father, Cush, died. 